looks like this guy. Mm hmm. Are there other others that should we be worried about confusing, or does it look pretty definitive? It looks pretty. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's quite the name. That's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> Bul Bulgum, let's go. Bul Bulgum is zoanthus, <laughs> Emily Acard Acadari. That's quite Emily the name. Emily um. That's definitely named after <laughs> someone. That's quite the mouthful. Yeah. I don't know what the genus name it's, is. It's so. like, they didn't say bubblegum. It's bubblegum. Bubblegummy. Bubblegummy zoanthus. <laughs> Emilia cadiarium. That, the double A's at the end are unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> look, it's for it's another additional one. effects. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there's another one. Okay, I'll write this out for you. Uh, Maybe. Zoom in. Maybe. This is what happens Era when you use a dead language to name Bulla things. Gummies, <laughs> Everyone things names it after themselves yep. and makes it spell really bad. Yeah, that <laughs> looks pretty. Looks like it. Like I think you might literally be able to copy and paste that. That's exactly what we're going to do. It's really pretty, though. It is. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're seeing new stuff. This is great. Woohoo. Let's keep seeing more Thank new you. stuff. Hey, so I forgot the pee. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen. Dwight's going to come in and take over from me. And the second <laughs> I go downstairs, we're going to be seeing like huge paragorgia fans. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be crying. He's got that magic touch. <laughs> nuh -uh, I'm going to say that I set it up for him. <laughs> <laughs> we set it up for him. What was the shark that we saw? Oh it yeah, was new a stuff white all tip. over the place New now. stuffs, yeah. Yeah, quick quick zoom on that. Looks like zoom a bamboo in. maybe. Oh, I'm making a mess here. Oh no, it's not no. at all. Sponge? Ooh. It's a sponge. That's a sponge? Maybe. Now it's starting to look like black oh. coral. <laughs> uh, black coral, that's black coral for sure, black coral. You can see the skeleton. Yep. I don't know which okay. one. Okay, sorry. Full wide. <laughs> yes, you got the right idea. Sweater time. Mm hmm. Frozen up here. Glad I brought it. Anyone excited to see the new Little Mermaid? Ooh. <laughs> I haven't, uh, I haven't haven't seen anything about it or do have no idea when it's coming out but i would love to see it not all about it but it seems cool um it comes out may 20 something okay but it will be here so it's okay <laughs> it'll be around for the rest <laughs> of our lives <laughs> yep i always wait till movies come out on disney plus <laughs> I meant to download Finding Nemo before it came out oh, here. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, but I think Finding Dory is so much yeah. better. Finding I'm Dory going for my too, sweater. But Nemo, so you know, that hits off. the... Yeah, hits it's that, an original. The, the youth spot. The Didn't memories. quite grow up on Disney, so... Oh, I think it's another Holothurian in the bottom left. Yep, mm. there is. With another wardrobe item. change. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a little sponge to the right there. This is very stressful for the pilot. They're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gotta be able to change my sweater. It looks like there's a sea cucumber over there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, how far is that, uh, um, Cheyenne? Um, we're about 80 meters to being parallel to it. 
Um, how far is it uh, far from us? Uh, directly from us, it yeah. is about 90 meters. Okay. Yeah. And is that the direction we're sort of heading in still, or what, what direction? What direction um, as the ship moves? So we're still heading. We're heading in that direction, but okay, so we're, we're not. not yeah. We're not going to hit it exactly. It's pretty much a beam of us right now. Okay, so we're we're going to be going same direction as we have been, sort of flying by it at a lower angle. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we can't go north or normal to the slope. Uh, we can't go a beam. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Same weather, right? Yeah. Doesn't change. Okay. Sad, oh, sad. We'll see what yeah, we can see. The fun parts over. Yeah. It was nice because we were going nicely up slope here. I we're going to be traversing a little it bit now. Gets, but traversing gets a bit tedious from a piloting perspective. Yeah. We should still be. We should still be going up slope. Do we have multiple waypoint threes? Now I'm confuzzled. Oh, actually, it does look like two of them are labeled waypoint three. Is that Let one looking like it might actually be four. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, maybe that is waypoint two, and we haven't no, passed. Waypoint no, waypoint two is no. back there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we've got more waypoints than we think. That's okay. Yeah. So we're heading. All right. We're still heading up slope. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Let's continue on in that direction. See if we get shallower and see any uh any new stuff. We can uh some sort of shrimpy thing. Yeah, keep moving. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, with a stem, with a long. Looks like a an, an ophiroid or, or snake star that's like on a skeleton flying yeah. around. Yeah, zoom yeah, in. Yeah, it's true. Wow. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Gotta uh -huh. use what you can out here. Yeah. Looks like it's on the top, but there's uh, yeah. appendages on the it's bottom. Like it's kind of and there's bent. a crinoid on the bottom. All on the stock. And that's so okay. that's cool even Worldwide. after they've died, sponges and coral in the deep sea provide structure for other organisms and uh, ways for other organisms to get sort of up out of the bottom boundary layer more towards where they'd be able to reach more food that's passing by in the current. You scroll this one. Yep. Thank you. And Loopy, if it's been a while since we commented on sort of where mm. we're at and what the substrate is, now's a good time to do that. So we're still going up slope, aren't we? Interesting how we're still seeing those yellow stalked rhinoids. Not much mm -hmm. of the darker ones. They seem to have a yeah, wide I think distribution. the darker ones were lower and more on the sandy, sandy area. I thought it was, I thought mm -hmm. they were more on the... Um, the yellow ones that we collected are the ones that we were starting to see on the rock, on the, on the more rocky areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe. Ooh. Is that a hole? Is it an anemone? Is it a shadow? Mm. <laughs> I think it's a shadow. Maybe? Curious. Curious. <laughs> it looks like a shadow. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Just getting excited about shadows over here. <laughs> I think above shadow. it there was something that looked a bit feathery, but no need to be another shadow. shadow. It's just me being crazy. <laughs> See that up uh, maybe that's just a shadow too. I think it's all just shadows. Yeah. Yep. I think uh we're in desperate need of something to be excited about. <laughs> <laughs> <The shadow. laughs> Look at that. You never know what works in the shadows. You, you never know. You never know.
So if you're just joining along with us, welcome aboard the Exploration Vessel Anonymous. We are currently in an area of the ocean that is within the exclusive economic zone in the United States. This is close to the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, as well as the Cayman Reef area. We are currently about 2,228 meters. Purple thing. Zoom in a bit. Maybe another Holothurian. No, yeah. Oh. That looks like a Hymenastra sea star. If we could zoom just a little bit more. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Hymenaster. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a cute that's little guy. Cute. That should be under, oof, is that under the Terraster? That's great. Cool. Nice. Thanks for the zoom. Um, okay, let's try it. Okay, again. full wide. Sorry, I'll write it out for you. Sorry, I just Hi, pushed in a little master. on your camera for a beauty shot. Here. Yep, it's a Terra steroid in the Velatita. So much of the work we do on this expedition includes mapping, exploration, and C4 characterization. This is the work we do to help uh, add valuable information to a database that can help inform us on the biodiversity of the entire ocean, as well as the geological makeup of the ocean floor, and can inform us on the potential creation of a national marine sanctuary within this area. This is currently open for public comment. So as you are watching our live stream and exploring the oceans with us, feel free to add your voice. Bridge nav. Can we do 50 meters at uh, 300 degrees this time? Uh, point two, yes. Thank you.
So while we're looking for stuff, I have a little riddle for you guys. Okay. Where can it. you find an ocean with no water? Where's that? An ocean with no water. Mm. I don't know. Where? On a map. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um. It's always something you never think about. My mind was just like revisiting some oceanography classes. And like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was thinking about like frozen oceans on other planets. I was like, that's still water, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Two, just got the like science hat on in here, you know? Yeah, it's hard. Like Death Valley, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Michigan's Upper Peninsula was once. <laughs> yeah. All the different rocks they're finding up there. And it's just, I was there just like a month ago. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah, it's really fun. So many places used to, to be, or so many rocks that you find in different places used to be underwater. A friend of mine was just uh, somewhere in up in the mountains doing a ski tour and was like, and I saw a boulder with a nautilus in it. <laughs> so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much of what we know about Earth's ancient history comes from the geologic record, especially when it comes to marine, uh, intermarine environments. Mm hmm And then there's so much that we, we that didn't get preserved that we don't know. You know, we have records of organisms that preserve well, that had hard body parts, but there are probably a whole lot of all the soft things. organisms we don't know about. The squishy things. All the squishy things. Exactly. So the fossil record is definitely a bias when it mm -hmm. comes to that. Yep. Oftentimes for soft body organisms to be preserved, it has to be very specific conditions. You know, one so of those types of rocks is called, it's a German word. I'm losing it for the life of me. I guess it was an L. Lagerstatten. That's what it is. Lagerstatten. What was it called? Lagerstatten. All right, no, 10 times fast. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Lagerstatten, Lagerstatten. <laughs> And what's the characteristics of that? Uh, large yeah, dog? so it's usually a, a sediment that's extremely fine, but it preserves details very well. Um, it has to, of course, occur in situations where there's rapid burial. Uh, a lot of where we find Lagerstatten is in places like the uh, White Coast of Dover in the UK, I believe, and I think in some areas of Canada, like in the Burgess Shale. I have to double check on those, but much of what we know about a lot of soft body organisms comes from these uh, types of rocks that have mm. very soft sediments to them that can also preserve a lot of detail and don't have much of a oxygen environment with them. So that's how we know about ancient jellies and many uh, ancient bony fish that had really small bones. How do you spell that? Do you know how, how it's spelled? Uh, that's a good question. Curious. Ah, found it. Okay. So it's uh, got one of those really funky non-English letters in it. So it's L-A-G-E-R-S-T-A uh -huh. with two dots on the top. T T E N. Lagerstätte. Mm, a German term. Really cool. Oh, oh that's some sort of polychaete, I think. But. Look generally. away for one second, we see the sighting oh. of the hour. <laughs> oh, the camera's tilted up too far, I think. That's all right. It? Did it just run away? It ran away, Yeah, maybe. it was fast. Yeah. Oh, it did. It's all right, though. 
Oh, oh there's there it is. Swimming no, that's, needs back. that's something else. Or something else. Okay. Yeah, but huh. I, that looks almost shrimpier. Yeah. There we go. Did it just do that on its own? I just uh, bumped up to try and oh, keep okay. you guys yeah. in the middle, so. and then must have just shot straight up. It does that. Why can't I spell? Ooh, some sort of jelly maybe to the right? Mm, yeah. No, mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh. And just like oh, that, it's gone. It was sand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. it, is it was a shadow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> was it a crinoid shadow? It was We're a mirage, it. an illusion. <laughs> oh, it's there. It's there. Oh, yeah, there's something there. Yeah. A ghost. Faint ghost it's, of something. Oh, it's so hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like The one a time we have jelly. more sediment. I know, right? The knot. Oh, oh. It, it's so cool. Okay. And there went. That was. It looked like remnants of what once was a gelatinous organism that is no longer or something. Interesting. How many rocks do we have, Loopy? Just I'm trying to remember how much we've collected. Not that I want one right now. Don't. Don't get excited, everybody. Let's see. Looks like we got four rocks. Four rocks already. Yes. Adam was knocking himself out. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not even going to think about it. About to get bumped around a little. And they got two eDNA Niskins, right? Yes. Okay. Um. Michael, in a moment here, I think since we're seeing so little bio, we can call this a good background eDNA sample. Sure. They collected two in more dense areas earlier, so uh, Loopy, which ones did they get? They got five and six, it looks like. Yeah, they got five and six. Um, so if on the fly in a little bit, we could just grab from wherever. Yeah, like any time now? Yeah. Um, let's give Cheyenne a second. Let me get situated. Yeah, sure. Do you know what ones they pulled already? Or yeah, I, I think it's see. five and six is what we have written down, but uh, if we could confirm in the sample salvo, that'd be good. Yeah. Go drive out ahead another little bit here. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm tired. No, I didn't sleep very much on the last one. Oh, no. All right, stay here. Spin back around. Stay there. So the auto XY is not at all. Be what is, is this? What's it doing? Is it's that it auto XY? Doesn't look like auto XY, does it? No, <laughs> it's flying away. Stop. Is it still light, even with all the, all the all the weight? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Okay, that's not working. <laughs> um, let me just hold on. Scoot out there again. I don't even really need to do that anyway. For the auto XY, we might have to reset the DPL. Yeah, sure, try it. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't have anything on right now. Just do it and see if it works, because okay. the bottom is flat enough. Cool. Hi, buddy. So let me know uh, when you're done. 
Bridge Nav, can we hold position? Thank you. All right. Can, um, Sarah, can we get the, um, the... Arm? Yeah. No, the, uh, the, the Niskins and the Niskin camera. It's one of those switched. So number four. Okay. Still working on the Doppler? Um, I think it should be good now. Okay. See, it's, it's not green. Yeah. Well, that looks a lot better. Yep. I should do it. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. So right now we're taking the Niskin sample, and um, the purpose here is to gather eDNA, which is helpful in figuring out what lives in this general area without actually sampling any um, particular organism. Pan and tilt light on, please. This should work here. 12 to 4 team, I'm handing over to Dwight. I will miss you all. Good okay. luck, and I hope you see fun things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good night. Number four. Got it. I'm good. Are you kidding? Bridge now. Uh, let's continue with 50 meters at 300 degrees and 0.2 knots. Thank you. My heading doesn't want to change from 180 right now. No, it's going back the other way. So Sarah, when we take eDNA samples, do you know how that's processed in lab? Um, I do not off the top of my head. Probably something um, to the degree of dehydrating the sample and then taking um, Not many corals. Yeah, no. super homogenous in the terrain right here. Yeah, I don't think we saw much corals. We've seen a few. <laughs> We've seen some chrysogorgids. Um, well, yeah. But not, not so many. We saw that black coral also. We also saw that one 
with that really interesting name that um oh yeah uh, the, um <laughs> bubble gummy one oh. i don't know yeah. if i want to yeah. try yeah. it it was very long it. <laughs> yeah there's oh, the that? bubble yeah yep <laughs> there's a oh there's sponge. um yeah it looks like a sponge come up a little bit there sarah uh zoom in yeah please awesome Ooh. Ooh, yep. Stock Looks like a Upuck Telid, maybe. Definitely. Yeah, mm hmm. Um, great zoom. Thank you. Great pictures. Okay. For Which why one do you think it is? It's. I want to say it's some sort of euplectelid, but I could be super wrong, but that's what it looks Possibly a looks like. I was going to say, I, I would type it in the chat, but I don't have that capability right now. <laughs> it's fine. I, have to turn I that could probably... Back on. Yeah, sure, yeah. This is probably a glassy sponge, right? Yep, that one would be. Yes, sir? Yep, you can just write that um, Got it. family name. Thanks. Why am I over here? Okay, that's nice. So I have another joke for you. Sure. Yeah. Okay, perfect. There are two reasons why you shouldn't drink toilet water. It's number one and number two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, pretty good. that's a good one. That's funny. That's a good one. <laughs> Once yeah. again, like, give me, give me a second. And I feel like I could have thought of that. But <laughs> so clever. <laughs> I was like, two reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's gotta be more reasons than two. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what reasons. number three is. Yeah. <laughs> so Man. Use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> three is just all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> Dwight, any sort of expert geologist insight on what we're looking at? Oh, wait, what is that thing? Ooh, got a little cucumber. Yeah, these look like, um, Another you know, smallish uh, pillow basalts that have been exposed to seawater oh, yeah. for a long time, which is why they have this bitrital uh, texture. Another sea cucumber. If I'm saying that correctly, have you figured that word out yet, Daniel? Boy Toidal. Looks like the same type of sea cucumber that we saw earlier. Yeah, thanks. I, I'm probably Thank you for the zoom. Great plague. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. We should be good. Thank you. Okay. Full wide. Atalanta won't come around the right way anymore. She keeps spinning back. Try again. Yeah, okay. sea cucumbers do this really cool thing where they... um as a defense mechanism. Um, I think it also has another purpose, but primarily from what I understand as a defense mechanism, they, it's called evisceration, where they kind of just puke their guts. There you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like just like strings of stuff. We've, we've seen that before. Yeah, it's really cool. I have not seen it yet, but fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so when they do that, can they retrieve their guts, or is it a one one and done kind of thing? Um, yeah, they can bring it back in. I think oh it boy. takes a minute, though. Oh, there's some sort of fish or fish. something oh. here. Yeah. All right, check that guy oh, out. Look at that fishy. Ooh. Okay, this is something we haven't seen yet. Okay, oh, do a little a zoom. One. Not too much. Wow. I'll just try and fly around. Yeah. Ooh, that's great. What do you think? Any guesses? Holosaur? Um, ooh. Man, Fisher, the one thing where I'm not. Looks like some sort of eel. Um, I like how it's see. photogenic. It's just there. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Some kind of eel. I like that. That's a good Some kind of <laughs> eel thing. Very maybe. long tail. Look at mm -hmm. that. I don't think it's a cutthroat eel. Um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Whoa. Yeah. Hello. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. 
Oh, wow. Oh, oh, he's quick. That's safe in there. Probably super confused by the light. And the amazing noise. Everybody forgets about the noise. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ROV is making quite a loud noise. Oh, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Yep. I ha we have a, a Blue Robotics ones for uh, some work I'm doing home. And uh, the cameras are like mediocre, so we put a GoPro on there in a in a case. And the first time I looked at the video, it didn't, it didn't occur to me that it would be recording audio. <laughs> and I like jumped out of the seat. It was just so loud, just squealing, oh thrusters, and it was really noisy. I can only imagine how much noise Herc makes. <laughs> well, I wonder the the creatures down this far. What's their hearing like? Um, I mean. Probably, I mean, they probably have a lot of sensory organs, most of them, um, you know, for sound waves in general, but probably not super, like what we think hearing is. Also yeah, some sort of vibrational. gelatinous thing. They could probably feel it. Oh, I think that might be a coral. Kind of looks like a chrysocorgid from here, but I can't really see. Oh, and some red shrimpy thing, maybe. Like a shrimp, maybe, is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, zoom in. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Oh, oh yeah. cute. Ooh, it's one of yeah. the long-legged mm -hmm. ones. Another shrimp, another long-legged shrimp. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Wow. And then there's long those legs are. Something yeah, let's take here. a look at that coral. Another, oh yeah, yeah, another chrysogorgid. Oh, and this is um, really great. Let's try to look at that angle. Associate? Is that an associate or is uh, that part of the coral? Could be. Total yeah, coral. that could definitely be a um, jellyfish. Um, What's the common name for this one again? Um, I'm. Oh, sorry, go on, Loopy. No, I was going to say, is that the one with the bubble gum something? No, I that is so. Paragorgia. Or is this Saddlebag or something like that? Um, So Saddlebag is actually just like a variant. Oh, yeah, it looks like that could be a... Must be an associate. Predator. Not quite sure from this angle, but that is definitely... That could be the... I don't think this is... Actually, let me check. Um, but yeah, great zoom. Thank you. Okay, full wide. I'm gonna catch up a little bit. Some people in the chat uh, suspected that the fish earlier is a halosaur. Yeah, that's, I was just about to say. Halosaur B. Thank you, chat. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, didn't I? Halosaur. You probably did. <laughs> that's what it looked like so to me. So sorry. I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, that looks a lot like it. Loopy, if, I don't know if you want to, yeah. if there's anything that you want to update with that or, um, it's under eel like fish. Yeah, and that was not a, um, saddlebags, Chrysogorgia, I want to say, because I didn't see those little knobs that we saw on the other one, but looked like a regular old Chrysogorgia. There's a yellow something something here. Oh, um, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe another. Might be another crinoid, yeah. might be Bridge something now. else. Ooh, and we yeah. do also another 50 meters at 300 degrees and 0.2 like. knots. Hey, zoom in. A couple different things Thank here. Thank you. Yeah. Looks like a crinoid. Yep. Mm hmm So. Then. That could be, yeah, another crinoid like we saw earlier. Um, I forget the name of it. Great zoom. And then I think there's something to the right of it. Mm hmm That's uh, another Chrysogorgia there, maybe? Yeah, this guy. Ooh. Let's take a look at the, these polyps. That again. looks a little different. 
different. Might be. I feel like Brian showed us that in his presentation. Yeah. Um, Some sort yeah. of coral? Yep. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think. One of these? Crazy. Uh, Might be a uh, I can't quite see. It's a good zoom, though. Thank you. Okay, full wide. Our coral expert left. I'm a, I'm a coral we expert can guess, in training, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I found something that looks like it, but. <laughs> so back on really uh, tough. back on a crescent gorgia, do they ever have uh, octopi eggs? Most people in the chat suspecting that. Octopi eggs. Oh, another hollow third. Um. I'm just gonna skip that one if it's okay oh, yeah, and no, get back going. out front here. Yeah. All good. Um, it could. I'm not entirely sure. So sorry. Usually the octopus brood their eggs, so right. I don't think they. I don't. Desert them. It did look more like something like an associate, like that um, red jellyfish we saw before. Oh, Thirteen. Another Was that just now? Allosaur. No, that That's from before, uh, right? Before. Yep. Yeah, we haven't hit 12 yet. That one was the closest. Okay. Come up a bit there. sort of red thing on the rock, but probably a shrimp. A lot of shrimpy things around here. Uh, zoom in. It's all right. Good. Okay. Thanks, though. But yeah, crinoids definitely seem to be the main, or one of the main species in this region, especially that yellow variant. Um, so I'm glad we got a sample. We can't tell. That's all right. So someone in the chat has helped us out by saying that Dumbo octopi are known for laying their eggs in Crestogorgia corals exclusively instead of brooding their eggs. Ah, okay. That's awesome. Thank you, chat. Yeah, so we're sort of coming into a bit of a trough between ridges and maybe there's less coral here because of that. They sometimes favor the uh, higher elevation where there's yep. more current. So, yep. Cheyenne, I'm wondering, it, we, maybe we try a different ship move after this. Do you know when they're going to be finished with this last ship move? Uh, probably in the next, like, five minutes. Okay, you see that um, kind of flat area above waypoint three? Mm -hmm. Like, if we did a ship, we could probably do a ship move that way. Yeah, cross we all those contours them. and kind of zigzag our way up the slope. So, let's mix it up a little and do that next, if that sounds good to you guys. Works for me. Yeah. Yeah, up there somewhere. 
and then we'll see if we see a difference in the uh, biology. So if you are tuning into the live stream, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are currently exploring an unnamed view, uh, right in the exclusive economic zone of the United States. We are around close to the Pacific Remote Islands Hermine National Monument, and this contains an, a targeted reef called the Kingman Reef, as well as the Palmyra Atolls. We're currently exploring in our 20-hour dive. Our ROV Hercules is about 12,000, excuse me, uh, 2,209 meters below the ocean surface. Shrimp in the Atalanta can, and it's gone. I'm so sorry if you guys can hear my hiccups. I'm trying so hard to mute myself when they happen. Um, but generally, if anyone, if anyone new is listening, we are in the EEZ zone of the Pacific Remote Islands, something like that. We're, we're not quite in the Marine National Monument. I think we're right outside. Close um, to it, yep. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we are, this expedition is to primarily define the biodiversity and geology of this area because these areas are all previously unexplored. So we really want to get a good idea, idea of what's in these areas um, so we can better inform um, future research and also the proposal of the Marine National Sanctuary. Um, oh, and there's some sort of urchin maybe in the center. Oh yeah, just uh, but uh, hopefully right. we'll get back to it. It's yeah. We're losing Argus here. Trying no problem. We <laughs> only got one thruster, so it gets uh, yeah, no worries. spun around sometimes. Ooh, another. Um, Is it a fish too? A fitted day? Yeah. A um, but yeah, if there's in the fr in the first blog post for this expedition, there is a link. Um, if you're seeing things that you like, if you're if you have opinions um, on na the proposed sanctuary, you can go give your public comment there. Um, and yeah, our whole goal is to better inform that decision and also better expand what we know about the ocean floor and the deep sea. Bridge nav. Uh, we're gonna switch up the direction a little bit. So can we go three zero meters at uh, zero six five degrees and point two knots? 
Uh, yes, please. Thank you. So yeah, we'll try to take up a 065 heading and then uh, go out on that. With this heading, we should hit to... this flat spot right on. Maybe turn on the thruster to get over that way. Oh. There we go. Yeah, it should be a little bit steeper on this next jog over yeah going up slope a little bit more there it comes yeah when it gets broadside the uh, uh, atlanta it's like it's, it's the same issue as the ship yeah <laughs> super sandy area by the way change of terrain oh yeah it's something. changed quite a bit hasn't it yep and it looks like there was something sticking out that looked like kind of coral-like that we just passed. But yeah, it was, looked like a darker crinoid. There's a different color stuffed oh, yeah. crinoid. Yep, another yellow one. And a zoom on there. Yeah. This is like a bright yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely something that looks like there's something else an associate on, on it. it. Yeah. yeah, maybe some sort of. Uh, I can't tell if that's something alive or something that was dead stuck onto it. Um, could be some sort of. Yeah, let's take a look at that stock. Okay. Maybe another just another animal. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Another crinoid. Yeah. It does look like it. Looks like it's like a skeleton or something. A little more zoom. Here we go. They're really cool. Thank hmm. you. Never seen one that color before. No. Yeah, um, this one earlier. Okay. Trying Full to wide. find the ID again. I think we were thinking that it's a hyocrinid. Looks pretty similar to that, but you never know. Hey, video. But hyocrinidae, hyocrinidae. It's an interesting black rock, looking yeah. a little different from the others. Cracked open, yeah. maybe. Yeah, we think we saw. Yeah, it looks the same from the one. other side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we think we saw a split one earlier. Oh, Just did you? To get yeah. yeah. Sometimes right you can see like the structure the of the pillow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was really cool. It was like uh, yes. stellate fracturing. Almost similar to polymer basalt. Right. But yeah, this landscape might seem super desolate, but there really is probably a lot of stuff that we can't quite see at this scale. Um, that would just take too much time to zoom in and look at. We did see some um, encrusting sponges earlier too when we zoomed in, but on the large scale, not, not too much in this area. No. 
Not to mention the microorganisms that are there. Right. So Atalanta hasn't quite started to move in this new direction yet, has it? No, not yet. I'm just still got afraid. a lot of wire out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're at about 2,200 meters. I think the end of this dive is around 1,600. So we got ways to go. Bridge now. Uh, let's do another 50 meters at six zero degrees and 0 0.2 knots. Uh, yes, thank you. How much longer do you think we have in our dive? Well, I we called the end of dive around uh, 8.30 to come up off the bottom but uh, we can be a little flexible with that exact time. And we're hoping to get to the summit of the GEO, which is um, at about 1,600 meters depth, so. Cool. Each watch tries to make some progress along that track line and hit a few waypoints, you know? Mm -hmm. This one's gone a little bit slower than usual because of the difficulties with uh, the ship holding station, or not holding station, but maneuvering. Mm -hmm. So in the uh, live feed here, are we seeing the sloping of the guillot, or is this just the angle of the camera? No, this is the this is the we're on the flank of the seamount, so um, this is the natural slope, kind of coming down coming down from the summit. Wow. Ooh, it looks like we have sponge. Yep. Yeah. Stock sponge. Quick, quick ID. <laughs> oh, that looks like what you saw before. Yeah. Never remember the Which names. Which is for some a <laughs> Is it the mm, Euplectelid? Okay, zoom in. Let's see. Ooh, yep. Yeah, beautiful. Euplectelid for sure. And potentially an associate. Can't yeah. quite see. Something there. Something moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely a Euplectelid. Oh, yeah, a little sea star. Or yeah, oh, yeah, little yeah. Little star, maybe? Might be a skeleton, honestly. Oh. Not quite sure. Because it looks like it's moving, but might be with the current. But Probably. Great zoom. Thank you so much. Yeah, it looks a little. Okay, go Um, And I will say, I think that was... A, um, can't quite see the name. Amphidiscella. Looks, looks pretty similar. Good guess. Educated guess. Yeah. <laughs> as much as we can, but that looks pretty, pretty spot on. Yeah, come up what a bit would on we the do without there? these photographs? <laughs> I really, <laughs> Loopy. It's um, it's towards the top of the page. It's uh, to the left. Or er, yeah. Yep, probably. Same One thing. of the ones at the top. I think they all have the same. Uh, not quite that one. I think they all have the same name. Um, they do not. Scroll up, uh, go back to the main page. Yeah. Or if you hit the up arrow. Oh. Yep, there you go. That works <laughs> too. Um, so go, so if you go to the main ID page, if you go to Uplectel, it's stocked. Should be one of the top rows. <laughs> Another crinoid here. Our star player. Haha, <laughs> get it. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, you can just click that first one. Some sort of undulating, maybe polychaete, maybe jelly. Looks like a polychaete though. Ooh. And there it goes. A rock got in my way. It's all good, all good. The one time you don't want that to happen. Yeah. They're fast, they're fast. Also, no way to ID those things. <laughs> Too small. So there's a section here about the, um, where we could ID like shrimp. They'll be on their arthropoda, right? Um, yes. Shrimps are arthropods. Scroll this one a little bit. Thank you. Oh. There we go. Bridge nav. Can we do another uh, five zero meters at 60 degrees, uh, but down to 0 0.2 knots? Uh, zoom in. Thank you. Different ki kind of sponge. With a little off ophiroid. Yeah. Ophiroid. Just realized I was muted. <laughs> we do have a sponge. Sorry about that. Good zoom. Thank you so much. Looks like a full wide. Unstalked. You click tell it, but you check it out. Sort of glass sponge for sure. That's good for the data logger. Some kind of glass sponge for sure. Yep. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. Oh that's interesting. Oh yeah. kind yep. of just popped into okay. view. Zoom in. Ooh, that's fat. Nice. Maybe some kind of anemone. Uh, one a. of those anti somethings. Believe a coral. Oh, it looks like a mushroom coral with its. Yep. Yeah. Mushroom coral with its polyps out, I think. Those are neat, huh? Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. zoom. Yeah, so we saw one earlier with its polyps in. This is with them out. Okay. Full wide. So, pretty Please, cool. I gotta get oriented cool. here. Thank you. It says a mushroom coral? Yes. Yep. Oh, and then another maybe skeleton thing, but we gotta keep moving. So how do these corals eat? How do they uh, digest their food? I know they filter feed, but what's the uh, internal process of like digesting the nutrients? Uh,
Might have to think on that one. Are you, Daniel, are you speaking? Yeah, I'm way behind here. Yeah, I'll speak more. Like on, why can I not? Hold on. You're not listening to SPL. Oh, oh I see what's going on. So when I, I get caught up here, mm -hmm. can we reseat re Herc? Because he's more, it's more like here somewhere. But let me just yeah. get out in front there and stop moving around so much. You'll, you'll get better hits. Do you want to reset now? We can stop the ship and. Uh, if I just park out here, like I, I don't know if you need to stop the ship or not. Just um, like the DVLs all wandered over mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah. So. I don't know, maybe wait till you get, to, yeah, like those are, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, right in there. Awesome, thank you. Pretty steep section here. Mm -hmm. Daniel, did you say you were a park ranger for yeah. a Bright? Was it Bright? Which which park was that? Mm -hmm. Yep, I was at Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful park, especially in the winter. This past winter, they got so much snow out there. Like, in some parts of the park, it was like 10 feet. No kidding. Yep. So what would that, uh, how that affect your day-to-day -day operations? Honestly, it made it easier to tell people where to go. <laughs> the park was about 18 miles long, but we had it closed up to three miles. So we just uh, directed people to the main viewing areas, and it was really easy to talk to people, to get out there and show them around. And once it started to get around March when people were in spring break, it got incredibly busy. But it's nice that people get to come out and see the beauty that this and that part of the country has to offer. And yeah, the program I was a part of was called Scientists in Parks, and they place people who study uh, STEM subjects in college in programs in national parks around the country. And if you're interested, they are currently having open applications right now on their website. Amazing. And, oh yeah, and one thing I want to add is oh, that... I'm just going to butt in. Here's Looks a coral, like some I sort think. of coral. Yeah. Sorry, Daniel. No, you're fine. Okay, zoom in. Oh. Oh, okay. That looks to be like... A black coral, I believe. No. They got a little more juice. One moment. Yeah, and a little too. Yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> Great so many zoom. types of black coral. So much.
Great zoom, thank you. But yeah, looks like a black coral of some sort. Uh, this angle, yeah, you can see the stock a little better. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Full wide. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. a black coral. Full wide. Nice. Thank you. Look like the bathypathies, like earlier. Bathypathies. Yeah, this one. I like it. Ooh. Antipatharia. It's like a big sea star? A brittle star? Brittle star? Yeah. Zoom in. Looks like what we got a sample of, I think. And then up in the top left there looks like something red. Oh yeah, something red. Probably a shrimpy thing. Oh yeah, another brittle star. Looks pretty similar to what we sampled. Oh, there goes a fish on Atalanta. Awesome. Okay, full wide. Is that a shrimp over there? Um, probably. Okay, you can see. Big. <laughs> yeah, they can get pretty big, actually. It's funny how variable shrimp um, sizes can get. So yeah, back on the topic of um, the uh, national park I was at. So the career path from working there to here is really based in science communication. And that's a big passion of mine, just getting to talk to people about all sorts of things in the natural world that we study in science. And yeah, that also led me to being a science communication fellow here on the EV Nautilus in this expedition. Do you want to zoom oh. there? Um, yeah, that Ooh. looks like a different color. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to yeah, say. Zoom into that one. Wow. Beautiful. we got a double feature here. Sea yeah. cucumber and yeah. a carnoid. Okay. Wow. It's a beautiful color. We have not seen that yet, at yeah, least on my watch. Sorry. No, it's all good. Coming up too close to the hill, blowing up dirt. No worries. <laughs> we Full got a pretty wide. good picture. Um, looks like, yeah, definitely some sort of sea lily. Um, can't quite get a good read on what specifically. And some other holothurian next to it. Daniel, if I were planning a trip to Bryce, mm -hmm. um, what month would be the best month to go visit, and what is your top hike? That's a great question. So I'd say late October to November. Around that time, it gets uh, the busy season starts to wane down, and it's right before there's any big snowstorms that hit the area. And one hike I'd really recommend is it opens up because we have some trail closures is the Queens Navajo Loop. It's about three miles round trip and it's like a 600 foot elevation difference, but it's a good hike through all the hoodoos out there. The big rock spires that the park is mainly known for. And you'll see our star attraction of the park, the Thor's Hammer. Looks just like the Norse God's iconic weapon. That's great. Well, I will pick your brain for more because oh, I am well. planning a trip this year. <laughs> yep, and I have plenty of pictures to show you too. Looks like some sort of sponge Dead on sponge. that left rock. Yeah. Want to zoom? Oh, I see it now. Um, yeah, be great. That's a. Go ahead. It's 
probably a skeleton of a Yeah, it looks like it became disconnected and Yeah. Yeah. Faraday. Met nope. its demise. Faraday. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, full wide. Faraday? Yeah. Um one of these. So Cheyenne, let's yeah, we'll keep moving the ship um past so that the vehicles get up on that ridge, you know? Honestly it's a bit yeah. too it's most likely the sky, but it's kinda hard to Yep, got it. It looks like the sky, but kinda hard to describe further because it was just a skeleton. So Dwight, we often had different names Another for. Fish on the Atalanta can. We often had different names for geologic features under the ocean, but where does the word geoc come from? Yeah, good question. Um, I don't know the story as well as Adam Sewell does, uh, but it's named after a person, and I believe that person uh, worked with a famous marine geologist named Harry Hess out of. Uh, Columbia University, and uh, I believe there is a, um, the building for geology is named after him, so Gio, and he was one of the early marine geologists that discovered these flat top seamounts, and I believe it was named after him, but I'm not 100% on the facts there. I could probably check some sources online on that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was a discovery after, um, when they, in the early days, kind of following World War II, when the Navy was uh, collecting a lot of survey lines across the oceans, uh, they came across these flat-topped seamounts and were perplexed by them, I think, and uh, um, studied them and... Uh, came to the conclusion that the, you know they were formed at hot spots like typical oceanic islands uh, like Hawaii but then eroded down to sea level basically and as they rode along on the Pacific plate they submerged below sea level And these were hypotheses. You know, we did, they didn't have the tools that we have today to study these things back then. And uh, so they had these working hypotheses that they could then go test. And they did have sonar equipment. Um, they really didn't have ROV systems like we have. But they were able to do the mapping and show that these geos were really widespread all over the place in the Pacific Ocean. It's actually a very interesting story. It shows that oftentimes the scientific investigation process involves just having a really good observation which you can develop a hypothesis about and oftentimes yep. leaps and bounds and technology and engineering comes along with the questions we ask in science. We need to find new ways to answer them. Exactly. So science and engineering go hand in hand. Yeah, you know, back back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, the Oh, looks like there's a um, coral theory the of left, plate tectonics maybe? really evolved and you know, it really became modern marine geology as we know long. it once right. uh, we proved the theory of uh, seafloor spreading. Yep. We have Alfred Wegener to think for that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was a lot of working hypothesis then and with continental drift and how uh, the continents fit together and uh, it wasn't until really World War II where they had the Navy data Another to uh, look yeah. at the um, magnetic in. stripes on the seafloor and other features that helped prove plate tectonics. Mm. Yep. Another brittle star.
I like how sprawled out they look. They look so relaxed. Yeah, yeah. they're so <laughs> chilling. <laughs> yep. Like a couch potato. Oh, okay. awesome. Party Thank you too so much. hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really good detail there. Okay. Full wide. So we are observing a flat top seamount. Is there a difference if it were not flat top in the type of life that we would see around here? Um, yeah. Um, a lot of what lives on the sea floor relies on the current for nutrition, reproduction, um, competition so a lot of times you'll find that it's actually I might be speaking out of memory here um, but currents often break on the sides of seamounts so sometimes it's easier for certain organisms to live off the sides rather than the full top um, so yeah I mean, community competition really changes um, a lot within especially the deep sea, and that's part of the reason why we're still exploring today, to figure out why and what these communities look like. Because you can have a pretty similar um, looking environment in different places, but there's so many different factors that dictate what actually lives there. Yeah. So I got another little joke for y'all. Um, paraphrasing from somebody in the chat, so y'all just have to give them credit. What did Drake say to his ex-mermaid girlfriend? Oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you used to call me on the show from... Hey, yes. Oh, <laughs> the song. <laughs> Man. It's all the delivery, well done. <laughs> that was a great delivery. <laughs> Will it be the same as those deadpan? Yeah. No. So now we're back in this more rocky terrain. Lots of igneous rock. With butyrioidal texture, which is a word I never heard until a couple days ago. <laughs> I am not a geology person, but I'm trying to learn. Still have a bunch of those crinoids, the stalked crinoids, um, sea lilies. Um, looks like they're all still the same type as we've been seeing, yeah. which is really interesting with that yellow stalk. Yeah, I would say that's one of the more dominant species that we've yeah, seen on this dive. Absolutely. It's really been a sea lily meadow, mm -hmm. as Leela said earlier. Huh.
Yeah, not too many large-scale organisms. We're not really seeing any bamboo corals or... Not really. I'm sort of hopeful that as we get up to this flat sort of ridge feature that we <laughs> Give us see, something. see more diversity <laughs> or There's uh, definitely, quantity. I mean, I will say that there is a pretty decent amount of diversity um, yeah. when we do see the organisms. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, obviously we have been seeing like one type of stocked crinoid, sea lily, um, but right. other than that, it, it has been relatively diverse. Um, is anybody in the back row using the uh, still camera? I don't think so, no. I'm curious, what is this 4K camera that's on? I'm going to turn this off. If nobody's using anything back yeah, there, no. it should be fine. I say uh, no, no one's using it. I don't even know if that's something that's on the sub because the other two cameras are on a different page. Yeah, yeah, I, don't be under I don't think Ooh. the, the, that's the 4K view. camera is not on the vehicle right that's now. Is a, it? Well, the only 4K I know of is not on the vehicle, no. So we have the DSC and the pilot cam on. Yeah. Cool. And then there's the camera that's on your porch. That's, that's one of those. Yeah, so that'd be under the PC, right? Yeah. So I can take a peek around and see where that is. All right, we're looking at that on PC4. So um, I can throw that Another up. sponge in the background. Soft sponge. Or no? Am I hallucinating? No. Sorry, I didn't I'm not see it. Where is it? <laughs> I'm hallucinating. Never mind. <laughs> Continue. Did you kind of blend in with the texture of the rock? Yeah, sometimes? the sand. <laughs> the sediment. Oh, we There's got something to look something. at. Yep. Oh, it's a brittle star Ooh. on a dead coral. Maybe. Yep. Oh no, there's something still alive there. I think another oh. crinoid. Okay, but zoom oh. in. Multiple Sponge things. Me. Yeah, it's a little party. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, it looks like a wow. anemone or something. Um, ooh, yeah. Is it or is that it? Spiky texture. Yeah. It's definitely giving. Oh, is it a flytrap? I think it is a flytrap. Kind of interesting. A lot awesome. going on a here. Dead, uh, yeah. dead bamboo coral. Yeah. Look at this. It's been c the anemone ate the coral. Yep. And then the uh, brittle stars decided it's a good place to hang out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome find. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Look at that. Like. Never knew that anemones had died of coral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Couple things okay, on there. Well, we haven't collected a sample in a while, have we? Nope. No, we no, haven't. We haven't. I feel like we should do one more before our watch game. is over. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Maybe wait till we get up on this ridge. Oh, I'm way far away. I gotta catch up here. Hold on. Why do the brittle stars like hanging out on the? Um, sea lily so much? Um, it's probably, like we said earlier, raising them up from the sediment um, that are able to trap detritus and marine yeah, snow in the, the current, in that like kind of raised position. Come up a little bit on Atalanta. Um, Fre fresher food. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cool looking pillow basalt. Yeah. Starting to get into some interesting geologic Where? formations here. Yeah. Oh, there's something red-ish. Yeah. Maybe a sponge. Take a quick look at that. Yeah. Looks like another. Okay. Like a coral. Zoom in. Oh, Maybe a Ooh, little, another. Uh, there's a fish below, but it's all right. Yeah. Oh yeah, another bathy bathy pathies. I like bathy pathies. Mm -hmm. Finally got oh. it. There's an urchin. Oh yeah. Look at that urchin. Oh yeah. Great yeah. zoom. Very long spindly bit. Awesome. Oh, it kind of has a face. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's like a mothball. Yeah. Thank you so much.
Yeah, I actually really like this ship move. It's going to set up the next watch nicely for the final kind of ascent. Man. <laughs> I, I hope, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, let's keep keep the ship going because we'll get to the top of this little ridge, but then it'll flatten out, and we'll just get up over to the other side of it. And that'll be around the watch change, probably. They always and they get can the cool change stuff. the ship move back <laughs> towards the waypoints. There's oh, some a, sort of a green sponge and something. Another brittle star. One. Maybe a coral. Zoom in. Yeah. Oh. Nice use of the thing. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's got the... Uh, oh, ooh. looks like it's being eaten. Oh. I don't know. Or, Oh wow, oh colors. no, that's, yeah. Wow, look at that color variation. I have no... I wonder if that, it's got something on it. Um, it might, it honestly might, oh, that's really odd. I've never seen something like that. Huh. Really cool close up, thank you. Man, let me try okay, and empty that. Okay, full wide. That is something different. Look at that stock. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, and that might be nice colored. Big one. Is that the darker stock variant? It looks to be. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think because so. if we, I mean, I know, I'm not sure how much room we have, but, or if we have to keep moving, it's fine. That's actually huge. There's plenty of room. Yeah, uh, so we got plenty of room. <laughs> there, we right. have tons of room in the slurps. I don't know. If we yeah. find another one that's smaller, maybe we want to pick one up. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Oh yeah. They're all huge. Yeah. It's awesome. I think Sarah wants so to collect a something. star. Sea star. <laughs> I have not collected anything yet. Alright, let's do it. Pick something. Where's our list? Let me get out. Frontier before oh, you tell huge. me to stop. No. Yeah, take, <laughs> take, take, your time, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slow down now in a second. Branches of dominant coral. Ooh. Branching yeah. node for bamboos. Awesome. <laughs> Good thing we're not seeing many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chunks of dominant sponges. Yeah, I think we're really just looking for dominant species, fortunately. But yeah, there's really not. Maybe we should have gotten a sponge. Maybe well, if we come across one of those. sea stars, so yeah. since they are dominant species. True. I think we already got. We Where definitely the, already uh, got a sea star. Sea star you collected? Um. Well, they collected um, a small, a small black rock, and I think it had like a brittle star that was attached to it. Okay, but, but there was a crinoid or? or um, yes, we did collect one lily. crinoid, but it was the yellow variant. Yeah. Um, are we uh, in a okay. good position to start looking for samples? Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Um, those kind of look still a little bit too big. So, ooh, look at these rocks. Yeah, I said that we collected a small black rock from where previous brittle star sample was one. Was it? You want to get a crinoid? Uh, where was up? Oh, where was it? Uh, lower we left. Down there. We oh. lower left. 
A lower right, sorry. Yeah, lower right, lower I think, uh, let Might this come in. We got one like this, I think. Yeah, that yeah. is yeah. the yellow stock. Yeah, that's oh, the yellow okay. only. That's the one oh. we already have. Now we're seeing them kind of coexist, I think. Mm. Interesting. Where did they put it? In the slurp or in the... Um, no, we put it um, is in Lambda. No. Okay. Box. It's in the forward box, is and that? beware as well. Um, um, it's pretty floaty, right? right? In front of us, if you open that box I? again, it might come out. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I think it was sediment. I'm probably going to note that down. Bit more angular There's on the rocks here. Yeah. coral type thing at the bottom there. He's a yellow stocked guy. Nav. Ooh, Can we these. change the angle to zero eight zero degrees? Some really cool rock formations here. Not a lot of sediment. Oh uh, yes, please. Thank you. Zero eight zero. That sounds good. Uh, 50 meters and 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. Uh, no, still a bit too big. How large can they grow? How large can what grow? The uh, sea lily. Because uh, you see some pretty big ones. Yeah. Ooh, another Ooh. sponge. Um, Take a look. Not entirely Getting sure. Getting interesting here. That's really big. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, actually. We've got two things. Yeah, That's we do. That is, yeah. Ooh, great. So, that, that is, is a wish coral. list thing. Or a dominant coral. But it's not dominant, so. Uh, oh, is that actually? Kind of looks. You want to zoom? Like a, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Kind of looks like a flexorid. No, that's a bamboo coral. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's easy to see the yeah. the bands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's awesome. Dead Thank part you. of it, though. It's yeah. Been, uh, predated on, yeah. I don't see anything on it now, though. No. And then I think there was something to the right. Yeah, there's a little uh, munching away. Something down there. I didn't, didn't look like that familiar. Um, oh, do you mean on the coral? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, down here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not sure. Oh, yeah. Those. It's kind of strange. Red parts could be no. Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, I see. Interesting. Yeah, no that's clue. An odd little branch. Kind of looks like it's part of the coral. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then I think there was another um, thing yeah, there next was. to there the is, coral. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like there might be a black coral in the distance, like a little stalk. But yeah, back on against the rock face there. Yep. Like right. Um, yeah. Here. If we can get there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to look at this thing here? Um. Yeah. Let's look at that briefly. 
Okay, zoom in. That's New. a black coral too, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not sure what type, but definitely a black coral. Awesome. So pretty, I love the pink. It's one of the biggest black corals we've seen so far. Yeah. Um, and then, if we back up kind of into that rock area. Yeah. Just if wide. we're able. Up there somewhere, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really little. Potentially another black coral. Okay. Uh, zoom in. Can't get in there any more than that. It's all good. Oh, just this little stock here. Yeah. Oh, one of oh. these ones. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, that is not. What are you? That hmm. is something else. It oh. might be a sponge. Sponge, probably. Yeah. yeah. It like peas on a stick. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It looks like a kebab. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like more like a sponge. That's not awesome. a corn dog. And there's another one that's <laughs> another even one further there. back. Oh, yeah. yep. I see it. The little one. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, full wide. Wow. No, that was really pretty to see. Yeah, that's really yeah. awesome. That's something new. Yeah, yeah, up on the wind. I gotta catch up to you now. Here's a question. Why do we Ooh. call it a black coral when it looks pink? <laughs> um, it's partially because the way black corals, um, black corals, like when you look at their, um, their like central part, um, they have really dark skeletons. Um, so it's kind of just like a morphological thing. Also, there's another Holothurian to the left, but I think we passed him. Um, Sorry, yeah, I gotta, I gotta catch yeah, up. It's all, it's all good. Um, but yeah, they just have really dark skeletons, and you can usually see bands where the nodes are um, of their skeletons. So it's kind of just a characteristic that you'll normally see from them. But yeah, they can be of really so many colors. Ooh, that is a different type of star. If yeah. we can stop yeah. on that oh, wow. one. Ooh, extra I really like that star. Wow. Is that a sea star or is it a crinoid without a stem? Is that is definitely, I think it's just a sea star, actually. Let me check around. I think I just saw that one somewhere. Do you want to zoom on it? Yeah, that'd be yes, great. Please. Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Wow. Oh, that's so beautiful. Really cool. Yeah. I want to say I just had an ID on that thing. I was just looking at something similar, but that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so not all stars have only five arms. Have a whole bunch more. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Full wide, please. Yeah, it looks something like um, a brit. How do I say that? A PCR of whatever comes out of it, but, but that really could be completely wrong. So let me just wanting to spin the other way. Let me see and get it, back uh, to you. Dehydrated water. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, it's still going that way. 
All right, hey everyone. All right, Dwight. Little odd uh, mid watch Morning. change here. Yeah, Taking over for Leela. Yeah. I hope you guys are all well versed in your uh, coral identifications. Because uh -huh. right, getting we go. there. Uh, getting I'm, there. I'm yeah. not as <laughs> well versed as Leela, that's for sure. So we'll need your help. I know a yellow one from a clear one. There you go. That's a start. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do a little bit better than that, so we should be <laughs> Good, okay. Good. Uh, like it. <laughs> nope. Swing it. And uh, just trying to get oriented here, Cheyenne, what was the last ship move that you called in? Uh, it was 50 meters at uh, 300 degrees and 0.2 knots. Okay, cool. And we have a little bit to go on that move? Uh, yep. All right. We're still heading upslope just at a reduced angle uh, yeah. in relation to our waypoints, but should yeah. be all good. So we're kind of paralleling slope a little bit. What, uh, can I just, can you zoom out so I can see where waypoint four is? Yeah, Ooh, we thing. actually have waypoint three part two. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Okay. But well, we should still be heading. Where's the uh, original waypoint four? Do you know? Uh, there's just two of them labeled waypoint three, so. Oh. That's <laughs> like an SRA. Yeah. Oh, so then. I have a waypoint four, but. Okay. I oh, well, I see where yeah, five is. All right. Um, so it might be tough to get oh, yeah. there. Like, ultimately, we want to get to waypoint five at the end of this dive. Mm -hmm. So we might have to zigzag at some point, but um, I think this is fine for now. So. Are you guys comfortable keeping the ship moving and still being able to zoom on things? Uh, yeah, generally. Just uh, give us a second. We just stopped for the NISC oh. in there and um, yeah. had to get Argus back on track here. We're down one Argus thruster, so we've got it mitigated, but sometimes we lose Argus's heading. Gotcha. So when we stop, so we're just getting it back around. But yeah, okay. we've been doing zooms on the fly and pretty much stopping for sampling, right? Yep. All right. Pretty Sounds much, good. Yeah. Normal business. Yep. Um, yep. And I'll just correct myself real quick. Um, taken from the ocean exploration website from NOAA. So EDNA is actually, um, after it's taken, it it's separated from the water way. using a filter yeah, and see. then can be frozen, but it can also just be sequenced um, using metabarcoding. So, yeah. Huh, maybe I'm Pretty too far cool away. Pretty cool new technology that we can use. Um, oh, well, and well eDNA is helpful in both terrestrial and aquatic oh. settings. Um, anything shed from any organism, so any like cell, That's interesting, isn't um, it? excrement that contains DNA that can all shed light or shed cells. There's a pun in there somewhere, but um, it's a little too late for me to figure that out. <laughs> um, can help us figure out what's living around that area. Hold on. Yeah. And it wants to go that way. I'm too far away, I think. Hold on, let me fly back towards you. I think that's all it is. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, some sort of white gelatinous thing. <laughs> um, try turning the bad thruster on for a second. Or am I not? It's gonna go. Never mind. Come on. Oh. No, spoke too soon. Well, I'm kind of behind you now. Hmm. 
It's like the ship, it's, it gets beamed too and it can't do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe turn the other one on for a minute and just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, sorry. Now it should come around. turn the bad one off and see if you can hold it. Yeah. Get back on okay, track. that there should that should work. Yep. Okay, carrying on. Yeah, so the geology is all really consistent here on this slope from what I've seen, so we're not as interested in the, in the rocks uh, as we are in the animals, so what we're on the lookout for really is corals and sponges and other benthic organisms and taking zooms as we go. Haven't been seeing as many crinoids, but we also haven't really been zooming in as much. But um, Yeah, I guess you collected a crinoid earlier, we did. right? Yeah, was that we a did. stalked crinoid or yes, is it a it crinoid is. living on a. Okay, stalked crinoid. Yeah. Yes. So are we still getting a Niskin sample, or did we already get that? I kind of missed it. I believe the Niskin is complete. Not sure, though. Yeah, they just got a Niskin. Did you get that logged? Yeah. No, I did yeah, not. Yeah, number four. OK, they took number four. Got it. And that's the, Ooh, that was the background. Jelly. Still a bit too translucent to see. Oh, Just hiding that? in. Yeah. Holotherium. Holotherium, yeah. Sea cucumber. Okay, go ahead for a zoom. Yeah. Look at that little thing. Who's this little guy? Um, they... Yeah. Sea cucumber. Some sort of sea cucumber. <laughs> He's stuck. They usually hang out in the sand, don't they? And um, he was on the yeah. sand and got up on the rock. Yeah. Yep. It's a really interesting area for... Dead end road. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Thank you. Looks good. Okay. Full wide. Bridge now. Can we do 50 meters at 290 and 0.2 knots? Yes. Thank you. Like 42 knots. Oh, yeah, here they are again. Ah, more of these crinoids, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of these ones. Yep. And we were noticing um, a difference in the stalk color. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Um, but now we're in kind of an upper part of the water column with more rocky terrain. Right. And we're seeing these yellow ones um, hmm. more exclusively. You haven't really seen the darker stem in quite a but bit. But the uh, crinite itself color has been consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've been pretty. The crinoid is the entire organism. Um, right. Actually, yeah. So the stalk it's really interesting. And the feather or the. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> like the the arms. I don't know parts of animals that well. It's all good. Inverts <laughs> are super. It yep. can be super complicated. Not a whole lot living here, though, is it? Nah. Well, we we also realize that there's a whole lot that we can't see because we're a little farther out. And it looks like there's smaller things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on the in the larger scale, yeah, there's really not much that we can see. Um, there yeah. might be some smaller sponges and corals here and there, but it's really hard to tell. Especially with this butchery oil texture, 
Everything kind of blends in if you're not really looking. All right. How have the questions been this watch so far? We have some folks online with us. Well, we got people uh, mostly, you know, from the U.S. and waking up and giving us some good questions, but yeah, are just on along for the ride. Nautilus with your breakfast on the East yep, Coast. Early Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We're just uh, looking at where we're going, seeing if there's other areas that we can also head to, like going up a slope. Yeah, we're getting into a part of the slope where we're paralleling the contour a little more than going across mm -hmm. it. But that's kind of the nature of this track line we're on. Something, oh, I think that's just another crinoid. Never mind. But. <laughs> Maybe potentially a coral in that uh, center area. No, looks like a crinoid. Just kidding. You want to zoom on it? Yeah, it's all yeah. right. I mean, unless we want to. I guess we haven't zoomed in on one in a bit. Yeah, you're right. Tough to see at a distance. Yeah. yeah. If we're too far away, that's okay. Yeah, there could be things hiding in these crevices, but it's just too, it's really difficult to see. <laughs> we did find a pretty sea star earlier. That was a nice little sea star. Yeah, bright pinkish purple. Yes. Yeah, I could see what was the last rock one going up we on got. Was that um, the recently last? or a while ago? A couple hours ago. The last one we got, it was a large black rock. Um, sample 22. Okay. On our watch or somebody, or Adam's? No, that was like our watch. That was oh. like when the first, when we first start, got oh, here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah we collected. Maybe two hours ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah it was yeah. like two right hours ago. Right at the ago. beginning of the watch? Gotcha. Yeah, at the beginning. Towards the beginning. We've collected <laughs> a crinoid and the black rock and the niskin yeah. on this watch. Yeah. How much space do we have for other samples? Um, we still have the Omega. Um, oh, yeah. That and has two. A, we did have two of the starboard, uh, C and D. I keep looking at the laser and um, I'm like, it's we a have thing. The slurs, a lot of slurs, just, yeah. yeah. Just the laser. We have three more <laughs> this game and then two push cores. Excellent. Oh, that we already got some push cores, huh? Yeah. yeah. And you'll do you have any other jokes? Bottles. Riddles. Right. <laughs> something in these trying times oh yeah so i had an epiphany i realized that live streams like this it's just like running water on the internet mm. <laughs> Zoom oh. in. i don't so. get it <laughs> it's a live stream it's a stream oh <laughs> wow <laughs> right over my head I also, was with you. Yeah. I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, here's a pretty crinoid. Um, this, it looks like the stalk is still that yellow color. But, it's um, a green at the base. Yeah, really interesting. Really difficult to see. I think this one might have some texture on the stalk, but I think generally the same type, but... Okay. Thanks for the wide. zoom. 